five and six. It's teacher Kate, my returning student. Welcome back. I miss you guys. Uh, I can't wait to see you and new students. Welcome and I'm looking forward to meeting you all. So over the next few weeks, we're gonna be taking a look at an introduction to some of our science topics and some information we're gonna use throughout the year. So I'm looking forward to our online technology experience and um, looking forward to eventually getting back into the classroom. So let's get started for week one. All right guys, so to start week one, we're gonna take a closer scientific look at the coronavirus disease also called COVID-19. We're gonna get some vocabulary and get some English language that we can use to talk about this virus and understand um, what is going on. So we all know we're not at school. You guys are at home. I know you all love school and you miss me so much and it's so sad. So hopefully we can all understand this virus, get some more information, and understand what we need to do to get back in the classroom, all right? So the coronavirus is a communicable disease. This is one of our vocabulary words in red on the page. A communicable disease is an illness that can be spread from infected being to another. These diseases can be spread by contact with an infected person, a vector, or infected food and water. So specifically for the coronavirus, we're gonna talk about vectors, right? Also in red, the definition of this is a living thing that carries and passes on a disease causing organism. So this virus started in animals, one of our vectors, and then passed it on to another vector, humans, right? People. So we are a, we are a vector for this virus. And from one person getting this virus, it has passed on to more people, all right? Um, next, we're gonna take a look at all the vocabulary we're gonna look at today. We already got the first two, communicable disease and vector. For the rest of the slides, we're gonna see the word virus, respiratory, pandemic, transmission, symptoms, treatment, and vaccine. So let's go back one more time together and repeat these, all right? Communicable disease, vector, virus, respiratory, pandemic, transmission, symptoms, treatment, vaccine. All right, so take some time, practice pronouncing these on your own. I know it might seem silly doing it at home and not in the classroom, but it will definitely help. What is a virus? All right, so we see our vocabulary word in red again. A virus is a type of tiny germ that can get into our bodies, right? So these germs and viruses cause diseases in colds in our bodies. They are much smaller than bacteria. So when we think about bacteria even, we can't see that, right, without a microscope. That means seeing a virus is that much more difficult and it is that much more small, okay? That is, it's that much smaller. So viruses cannot be treated by antibiotics. So some of you, when you get sick with a bacteria infection in your body, right, you go to the pharmacy or you go to the doctor, or the hospital, and you get antibiotics and that helps your body fight that infection. So for this coronavirus and viruses um, in general, they cannot be treated with antibiotics. That's why they are so hard to fight sometimes. So also for a virus, it needs a living host or cell to survive. It cannot survive on its own. It needs a living host or cell to survive. With. Um, my grade five and six students, if you want to pause this video right now, go ahead and um, zoom to this link, um, a quick video on what is a virus. You can get some visuals, uh, some more information. Go ahead and turn those subtitles on to help you um, read and listen while following along. So go ahead and pause me if you wanna click to that link and come back and join me. Otherwise, we're gonna keep moving on, all right? So next for the coronavirus 
specifically, right? We see that word again, virus. So it is a specific type of virus here that is causing this disease, right? So the coronavirus is a respiratory virus, another vocabulary word, and it is spreading through droplets from the infected person, right? So the respiratory or the respiratory system is our body's breathing system, right? So we see the nose, the mouth, into pharynx, larynx, trachea, into the bronchi, bronchioles, lungs, um, alveoli, right? It's that breathing system for us. So air entering the body, air exiting the body. So this virus is going and infecting that system, right? So it's affecting throat, it's affecting the lungs, um, and the coronavirus does not have a vaccine to protect the body. So viruses often have vaccines created to help fight them, right? So a vaccine is usually an injection or a shot that you get at the doctors. Um, it contains very small weakened viruses of that particular kind, and they put it in your body so your body can create those other antibodies to fight that infection, right? And protect your body. So for this coronavirus, we do not have that. And that is why it's affecting so many people and making so many people sick and um, can even kill people, right? So due to the fast spread and increased number of cases around the world and the deaths it has caused, we classify it as a pandemic, okay? So another vocabulary, word bolded in red. We're going to take a look at that word more specifically on the next page. I also just want to um, remind my grade five and six students, pause my video right now, go and watch this video to get some background information um, and take a look at this. Or if you want to keep going and watch it at the end, don't forget to go back and click on it to get a little bit more info. All right. So our next slide for the pandemic, right? We're talking about this word as a vocabulary word. A pandemic is a global disease, right? This disease spreads easily from person to person and it goes across an entire area quickly and over a large distance, right? So we can see this picture right here of a map of the world, all right? These red dots we can see up here are the number of cases in different countries, yes? This has happened over such a short period of time, over a great distance, and that's what kind of disease we consider a pandemic, right? Uh, the number at the top here, I've got this information maybe about a week ago, so it could be a little off right now, but as of then, there was 4,723,150 confirmed cases of the coronavirus, right? So these confirmed cases are represented by these red circles across the map. I just wanna take a quick second to explain what we are looking at, right? These small little dots up here, that's representing 10 cases. A red dot of this bigger size is representing 100,000 cases. So we can see those circles across the map changing in size. That means the smaller circles, the countries have less cases, the bigger circles in those countries have more cases. So what country can we see on the map that has the most confirmed cases? We're looking for that biggest circle, all right? So we can find that biggest circle right here on the left-hand side in the United States of America. That is where the most cases have been confirmed of the coronavirus, all right? And then looking at all those other smaller circles, that means those countries have less cases. And we can take a look at Thailand right here and see that we have a pretty small circle. and We have been able to manage this virus pretty well. All right, so take a look at that. Um, there's a link at the bottom here, my five, six students. You guys can click on that and take a closer look at um, where I found this uh, map if you would like to as well. So looking at the coronavirus, we're talking about transmission, another red vocabulary word. Transmission means to transfer or to spread from one person to another. So we're looking at how does this 
virus spread from one person to another. We said it's a respiratory virus and infection, right? So people that have the virus cough, sneeze, spit, right? Maybe while they're talking and they're sending droplets of the, into the air that have this virus in those droplets, right? People around them or people that are nearby, right, are breathing in that same air and it's entering into your nose, into your mouth, into your eyes, or maybe you're touching a surface, right? That infected surface. P other people are touching it and then they are touching their eyes, their nose, their mouth, and that virus is entering their body, right? So now one infected person has now given it to another person. And that's how this disease and virus is spread from person to person. Signs and symptoms of the coronavirus are very similar to flu-like symptoms, right? We've heard the word flu, it's shortened for influenza. Um, some of you probably have had the flu before, right? You can recognize and identify with these symptoms. Chills, right? You're feeling very cold all the time. Um, nausea means you have a upset stomach, you think you will be sick. Fatigue is tiredness, you want to sleep all the time, or you have a fever, you are feeling warm or hot. Um, muscle pain, right? Your arms and your legs, maybe your back is feeling pain or is sore. Um, you can have a headache, right? Pain in the head as well as vomiting and diarrhea, right? Throwing up and having diarrhea. As well as loss of taste and smell, that means, right, your senses are not working very well, you can't taste things when you are eating or smell things when you are smelling. And most importantly, and lastly for these signs and symptoms is some people have no symptoms at all which is very alarming and scary and has caused this disease to spread so rapidly as well, right? People don't know they are infected and have this virus in their body, so they are going out in public and spreading this disease without knowing, all right? So for a virus, we also want to know what the treatment is, right? So treatment we can also explain as the care, the medical care you would get or um, the steps you would take to help you be cured of this virus, right? Get rid of this virus. So before we identified there is no vaccine, right? The injection that you can get in your arm to help your body protect itself and fight off that virus. There are no vaccines for the coronavirus. Um, what we do know that you can do is if it is a mild, not so serious case of the coronavirus, right? Letting your body rest, um, sleeping, not um, spending a lot of energy and getting a lot of fluids into your body is going to help, right? Drinking a lot of water. Um, if it's a more serious case, right? We've been seeing a lot of people in hospitals, they've been hooked up to IVs, right? Injecting um, fluids and things to help people's bodies into their system as well as breathing assistance, right? So this infection, this virus is into the respiratory system. So people are not being able to breathe on their own. All right, so that is the treatment we can take for this virus. Um, lastly, I'm just gonna move over here a second. Um, what we can, you and I can do to help contain this virus and get us back into the classroom, right? A few things that you and I can do and remember to have our families do. Right, so washing our hands regularly, clean hands. If you're touching your face, touching your eyes, touching your nose, wash your hands after, right? We don't want to be doing that, touching to our face and touching other things, right? That's not going to be clean for us and uh, a way that germs are going to spread, all right? So wear a protective face mask in public places. If you are going out in public, be conscious of yourself and your place to others, right? Staying six feet away from other people in public places, you don't know where other people have been or what they have been doing. So you need to um, make smart decisions for yourself as well. And lastly, limiting those public interactions and activities with large groups of people. So if you don't have to go out to the store every day, don't do it, right? So. We want to keep everybody happy and healthy and get back into the classroom. So 
these are things that you and I can both do to make that happen, all right? So I hope you guys have gotten some English vocabulary for talking and understanding about this virus and the scientific side of it and why we are at home right now, all right? So my grade five and six students, um, I have some activities added on to the end of this PowerPoint for you to look through. Um, there's a couple links. I think it's pretty self-explanatory once you click on the link. Um, you can read through some directions and check out, um, first one we have a little game, Can You Save the World, right? So it's practicing good habits that um, you and I can do to stay healthy, right? And lastly, this one's a little more interactive with a little bit more difficult English level. Um, so if you are struggling with it, please reach out to me. I'm happy to post another video of me going through it if you need it. Um, but yeah, check them out. They're fun games, activities, get you back into the English science mind. Um, so I hope you enjoyed our week one video. I look forward to seeing you guys next week. Um, I hope everybody's staying happy and healthy and hopefully see you guys soon. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.